So far we have been studying the coordination compounds, the metal complexes, from a mostly qualitative manner. We wanted to understand properties such as magnetism, color, charges, etc. And now it's about time that we bring these compounds that we understand so well into the mainstream of what we think general chemistry too is about. Is is about equilibria, is about concentrations, connected equilibria, and notice that like the formation that any other compound it has the uh, an equilibrium constant and unlike if you remember for from solubility problems the KSP the solid is always on the left the KSP has one single definition and that's not the case for metal complexes for metal complexes you have two main kinds of reaction you have the dissociation reaction in which the metal complex is on the left and the metal complex dissociates into the metal and the ligands and the equilibrium constant for this equilibrium is called dissociation equilibrium constant and well because all of them are soluble you both reactants and products appear in the equilibrium constant and typically the ligand will have uh, an exponent here because there's more ligands than metals and you should you should pay attention to that also sometimes it may be confusing because there's so many brackets in here one bracket, the external bracket, uh, means concentration. The internal bracket means that this is a complex or this is a coordination compound. The same com kind of compound can be studied from the formation point of view, in which the metal and the ligands form the coordination compound. And the uh, equilibrium constant is called of, of equilibrium of formation or formation equilibrium constant. Notice that these two are the same reaction but reversed. Therefore, the relationship between the formation equilibrium constant and the dissociation equilibrium constant is the inverse, which should make sense for uh, an, a complex that d dissociates very little, so that has a dissociation of 10 to the negative 10. It dissociates very little. It means that when you associate the ligands, it should associate, it should form very very easily. That is the inverse of 10 to the negative 10, the formation would be 10 to the 10. These two concepts are intertwined, they are connected, and therefore it makes sense that one is the inverse of the other. The equilibrium constant, of course, has this physical meaning as for how product bound this reaction is. So there is of course a quantitative aspect to all that and to do that um, we will we will show this quantitative aspect by trying to solve um, trying to solve a problem and in this case it says consider a solution made by mixing 500 milliliters of 4 molar ammonia and 500 milliliters more of 0.4 molar of silver nitrate well first of all uh, it's uh, it just already telling you that it will form this complex, the two ammonia and one silver, but it will go through this intermediate. Notice that in this case we have two formation reactions and you will see this kind of split of the formation of the complex into as many steps as ligands your, your complex have. So how do we know the overall reaction? The take home message here is that if you add up the these two reactions in which this will cancel out, so I have silver and I have two ammonia in equilibria with, and I'm going to put the brackets here. Now, what is the equilibrium constant for this? The equilibrium constant when you add two reactions is the product, so it'll be K1 times K2, so it's 2.1 times 0.2 10 to the 6. So that's close to 1.6 times 10 to the 7. It's a little bit more than that, but you need a calculator for that. That's the overall constant. Uh, I want to make sure you understand that these consecutive additions of ligands do not work as if it were a multiprotic uh, acid in which it, every time is more difficult to uh, remove a proton. In this case, we keep adding ammonia to a silver, and you notice that it's more stay even equally or even more stable to add the second ammonia. This K2 is larger than the K1. Anyhow, we have we have this overall reaction. We have the value of the constant, and is asking for 
the calculate the concentration of our complex. So we just need to build an I stable. So initially, notice that the total volume is 0.5 liters plus 0.5 liters. We're assuming the volume is um, additive and therefore the concentration of ammonia, we have doubled the the volume, therefore the, the concentration is halved, is 2 molar, and the concentration of silver, we have doubled the volume, so it's half of 0.4, so it's 0.2 molar. Alright, so initially I have 0.2 and I have 2 molar of this. In principle, I have 0 here. So, the change is the minus x and minus 2x, and this will be x, and in equilibrium you'll have 0.2 minus x, 2 minus 2x, and this will be x. 1.6, um, my equilibrium constant will be x on the numerator. Now concentration of silver, 0.2 minus x. Concentration of ammonia, but squared. The concentration of ammonia, squared. Okay. Notice that you could think that mm, x is going to be very large, so notice you in this case you can just not approximate as if it were zero. You actually need to need to solve it. Uh, there, there are some approximations as for, well, if, if all the 0.2 is gone, because this is my limiting reagent, x is going to be around 0.2. This could be my solution, because this is the limiting reagent, and this is a very displaced to the right reaction. However, if you want to get, calculate the exact number, you need to solve this equation. Um, so, depending on the level of answer that, that you want to give, this would be good enough, or actually you need to solve for x. In any case, it's going to be very close to 0.2 molar, because this is my limiting reagent, and for a very product-bound reaction, you can assume that most of the silver will be gone.